So in here, I have a couple of queen bees, which uh, have been preserved in alcohol, and I'm going to put some of this on the on this Q-tip and put it inside the the hive box. The idea being that the alcohol will dissolve some of the queen pheromone, and this will help attract them into the into the hive box. Okay, I'm going to put this Q-tip inside the box in the hope that it will just draw them in that much better. There's uh, quite a lot of bees there. And if I can just encourage them into the box, that will help the process. Ow! Don't try this at home. Now they seem to get the idea. fairly slow so far but uh, there are a few checking out the box hopefully they'll smell that queen pheromone and that will start them off You can't force them to do what you want them to do, you have to coerce them or encourage them and hope that they do what it is that, you, that is uh, what you're hoping for. It seems like there's a few more of them getting the idea now. Yeah, there's definitely a a movement uphill. They have a propensity to run uphill so once they start the rest will follow. Now you may see around the entrance there will be some workers with their tails in the air and uh, what they're doing is they're producing pheromone they have a special gland and the uh, they'll fan their wings to spread the pheromone up into the air so any bees flying around will smell it and they'll all follow. So the queen will be in here somewhere, hard to say where, but there's probably, as I say, you know, I think probably at least 15,000 bees there, there's quite a big swarm and the queen will be in there somewhere uh, but they don't follow the queen exactly, it's more of a majority decision because it's, I think it's very hard for them to distinguish one queen bee amongst so many. So they'll sort of encourage everyone to go into that box. And once the queen's in there, then that sort of focuses them better. We're getting quite a few there with their tails in the air fanning. That's, that's a good thing. I'm going to just brush them from the top there so that they'll, so we don't get a log jam. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they seem to be going in quite nicely now. Sometimes they'll bunch up underneath the uh, handle of the lid in front of the box, which is, seems counterproductive to me, so I'm just keeping the box in front of the box so they run in. Seems that the majority are going into the box. There's a few coming out, but they're heading the right way.
So I'm knocking some of these off because as they fly back, they're hopefully going to smell these ones up here, produce the pheromone, and then they'll go from the board and go inside. It seems to be working. They do seem to be getting the right idea now. There's plenty of them going up that ramp into the entrance. It's about an hour later, all the cluster is inside, they're flying in and out, uh, starting to gather pollen and nectar to fuel their building operation, they'll be starting to build combs and uh, they're orienting themselves to their new location. So I think we can regard this as a success, but time will tell. It's interesting that their new location is probably less than 25 feet from their old one and yet they don't return to the, to the existing hive. They've moved and they're orienting themselves to that new location and they won't be coming back. It's like a, they really, you should consider a swarm as a separate entity. entity. It's not a collection of 15,000 individuals. It really goes up to make one entity. It's like the child of the, of the previous hive. It's how they, uh, how they reproduce. Things are pretty quiet inside the observation hive now. As you can see, there's, uh, well, there appears to be very few bees left. In fact, there's going to be quite a lot between the frames, so there'll still be a viable hive and they will build up their numbers over the next few weeks but it's uh, certainly a lot quieter than it was a couple of hours ago